Hey guys, what's going on? This is uh, John Henry. Uh, in this tutorial, I'm going to be showing you relatively quickly on how to do some um, age reversal within Aperture for the Macintosh. Um, I've had a couple people recently ask me how I've been doing some of the techniques that I'm doing as far as like removing wrinkles um, and retouching skin quality and stuff like that. So I figured I'd make a quick screen capture and throw it up for people to check out. Um, so there's a couple shots that I got recently of Mr. Simon here, who was actually responsible for building just about all of Rustin, um, and definitely wanted to do them the honor of <laughs> touching up his skin and making him look a little bit nicer. So, um, cool, cool. First thing I started out with was, um, there's actually a skin smoothing technique directly in Aperture. Um, so you can see me here kind of just going through and brushing up the entire face region. Um, the bridge in the nose is a big one. Underneath the eyes are huge. Um, and also just about any other pocket that you can get to without really touching any facial hair or anything like that. It's pretty good. Um, remember too, whenever you brush in effects like this, you're also able to afterwards edit the area that you've brushed. So it's not necessarily just putting on what you're brushing at the time. You can also go back with the selected area that you've brushed in and edit that as well. Um, you can also see me here doing a little bit of micro adjustments. Um, <laughs> I got tied up with this. Looks like it didn't work for a while. Um, and had to go back through and kind of play with how I wanted to do a lot of the skin. Um, you could see at certain points too, it's starting to pick up the hair from the beard right there. Just eyeball it, do your best with that kind of stuff. You can always go back and fix it. But uh, micro adjustments aren't too, too important because remember we're at 142% zoom right now. So of course when you zoom back, um, none of this stuff is really going to be visible. You'll start to see me going into some of my phases where I'll do a bunch of effects and then just command Z my way out of all the mistakes that I made and undo everything. So that's kind of what you're watching right now. I was going through and seeing if I could fix those, but it looks like I've reverted to doing the clone trick. Um, one helpful trick that I've found with an aperture because it's not very pixel by pixel oriented, um, like Photoshop would be, is if you actually use the retouch brush and instead of doing the repair option, um, you can go ahead and select clone. You'll actually see me do a lot of this for his hair. Um, you can see he's got a couple stray hairs sticking out. Um, what you can do is select the clone icon and then go ahead and select the area about half a centimeter or however far away from what you're trying to fix is. And you can go in and brush that specific area and it will actually replace the hair with the background that's about however far away from that you selected. So it get rid of, gets rid of the hair for you. See me kind of doing the final touches on the chin, stuff like that. Um, getting essentially every area but facial hair and anything recognizable like lips that's completely different from just general skin tone. I've taken a vibrancy brush um, and actually kind of brushed in a little bit in his eyes. Then I'm actually going to drag it up to 100% as well. Um, eyes are kind of tricky sometimes, especially depending on how far away the shot was. Um, this one, I actually previously tried to pull up some of the saturation just to get a, more, a little more light in his eyes. But um, unfortunately, the shot just wasn't good enough for me to pull that up. Um, you can see me going back through now and actually brushing a little bit of contrast in. Um, the skin smoothing went really well, but at the same time left his forehead a little bit uh, 
babyish in a sense. Um, and you can see once you start hitting the cheek there that it actually makes it real, real dark. So I'm going to go ahead and pull a little bit from the upper portion of his head just so that it matches his cheeks. Um, you can see me kind of messing around with that eyebrow area in there. But the skin tone right now is just a little bit bland, so you want to give it a little bit of life back, and I do that with contrast. Very cool. So it looks like it matches up pretty evenly. Now I'm actually going to go through and brush the top portion of his head. Um, and this is what a lot what I was talking about earlier too. When you brush in a selection, you can see that's obviously not what I wanted. But I can then go back and using that saturation slider, see what I've done. And you can actually check and uncheck too to see um, a drastic difference between the original shot and what you've just brushed in. Um, so what I'm really looking for there is just to remove a little bit of the redness that was on the top of his head, but still keep that contrast that I brushed in. So now you can see I'm kind of fine-tuning the uh, skin smoothing because I have the whole map kind of uh, selected of where I want the skin smoothing to take place, and now I'm just kind of tweaking the effects. You can really see how powerful Aperture is. When I'm sliding those sliders up and down, you can see the change take place almost instantly. Um, and, it, and it definitely does make a pretty big difference, even just in that facial region. So going back to Retouch, um, when you do Retouch, you'll see that a lot, where it actually just blurs outwards. I know that in Aperture, I've, I've gotten a lot of feedback from people saying that it's obviously not meant to do stuff like this. Um, but there are certain tricks that you can use to get away with uh, removal um, and even superimposing in, in certain situations. Um, in that situation, it looks like I'm using the clone trick that I was telling you about earlier. Um, when you option click on any surface that's close to the thing that you want to fix, you can actually replicate that same feel and color and texture. Um, by clicking and selecting. So you can see I'm kind of just taking a little bit of the sticking out hair away. Get that little mad scientist look out of there. <laughs> you do want to be sure that whenever you're using this effect that you select the area as close to what you're trying to fix as you can, otherwise it'll be quite obvious that you went through and used a clone technique.
cool. So now that we've fixed a lot of the stray hairs, we're going to go through and do a little bit of touch-ups on the arms. Um, the arms aren't really the subject of the shot, so they won't really require a lot of touching up, and I wouldn't actually spend too much time on them, but it is nice to kind of throw that skin smoothing right in there as well. What you'll notice here is that I'm actually going to realize about right now, yep, that um, I don't actually want the same texture or quality of skin smoothing on the arms as I do on the face because I've already fine-tuned the face. So what I did there was in the skin smoothing option and actually with any feature that you're brushing in um, or effect that you're brushing into your photo, that little gray um, gear icon allows you to drop the menu down and select um, add new brush adjustment which essentially allows you to duplicate or have two of skin smoothing effects or whatever effect you're using. So if you have two parts in the shot, let's say for saturation, where you actually want to boost a little bit here and subtract in another place, you can do that simply by clicking on the gray gear icon and adding the new brush effect. I'm double checking just to make sure I like what I see. I'm clicking on that little checkbox and it takes it away. And then when you select the checkbox again, you can actually see what the effect looks like in comparison to when it wasn't there from before. Looks like we're going to finish touching up the last arm. And in situations where you're brushing in effects like this, especially where you have a, a white contrast from the shirt and behind, um, I like to raise the softness as much as I can. Um, keep in mind when you're covering large areas or you have to have a smaller brush, it does take up a lot more time because you have to um, make sure that you're not hitting anything and you don't really have a hard edge to base where the effect starts and stops from. So like we're going to do some of the finishing touches with that cloning trick I was telling you about. I'm actually going to touch up some of the hairs on the top of his head just to really finish it up. In best efforts of time, um, I actually skipped over that last part of doing the last bit of touch-ups on the hair just to actually uh, show you the end result without going over my time limit here. Um, but a lot of the effects that we went over today are going to help you touch up a lot of your photos, um, portrait work. Um, it's all about removing that that really nasty look, but still not really modifying a lot of the photo and keeping the skin alive and all the teeth and stuff like that. So you can actually see here uh, the original and the master image as well. So that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions or comments or even just general feedback, please feel free to voice it up. Um, I do appreciate you taking the time to watch my tutorial and hopefully I will hear back from some of you. All right, bye.